deal at all. What was that? Okay. Um, who heal it, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Now that's a wonderful thing. To heal all the diseases means inclusive of all and exclusive of none. Oh, that's lovely. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. And this is what we're going to talk about a little bit today in verse 5. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed as the eagles. So you need to tell me, according to Scripture, that there is food that can renew your youth. Well, that is interesting. In one more promise, that just in case you didn't have a nice youth with healing, it will also give you a promise that says he will restore the years of the canker and the pommel worm and all of these have taken. So is there hope for us in Christ? Yes, there is, and I think you will find it today. And I will try to speed through some of these things so that hopefully you can have a few questions and answers if you so choose. All right, so we're talking about perimenopause, and I'm going to talk a little bit about menopause as well. And uh, what's happening at this point in a woman, you can believe it or not, there is something called andropause. Men, you and when it happens around 60 or so, 62 or so, for women, as a general rule, uh, menopause begins, or we normally have about 400 eggs in our lifetime, and it's at the last one, you know, the body begins to, to, to stop, and uh, that as it's beginning to stop, that's perimenopause, and menopause is when those eggs stop, and uh, you start getting some interesting uh, side effects for men. Could be a midlife crisis for women. It could be that uh, uh, the hot flashes. Some people call it private summers, mood swings, dryness in the birth canal. All these different things begin to happen, and it's kind of for the first time. But it doesn't have to happen. Listen to this quote from uh, Dr. Robert Lee in his book. Um, it says this. Um, uh, uh, this, the, the mood swings are peculiar, and all of the things I said before, to industrialized cultures, and as far as I can tell, they are virtually unknown in agrarian cultures. I hope you're catching this. Like, this doesn't happen in cultures where they're agrarian, where they're not industrially you know, corporate and all these things going on here. It says, in native cultures, menopause tends to be a cause for quiet celebration. A time when a woman has completed her childbearing years and is moving into a deeper level of self-discovery and spiritual awareness. Maybe it is. She is becoming a wise old woman. Now, I didn't like that portion. Uh, anyhow, in these cultures, menopausal women are looked up to and revered. They are sought out for advice and their opinions are heavily weighed in the decision-making process. And it goes on. It's just strange to come to us. We know menopause as a death knell, the end of a woman's sexuality, a descent into a, well, we into some of those things. It says, how did this experience of menopause come to be? Here's the thought from the doctor. I believe it's a combination of poor diet and a healthy lifestyle, environment pollutant, we're going to get into that a little bit, attitude, the incorrect use of synthetic hormones, and, and here's the last one. This is interesting. So let's look at what happens in the slide there. If we go to the second slide, I want you to take a look. There's a lot in this slide. Yes, uh, so just so you have a background, my computer is about to be. I was my phone till we are outside. And so I had to do this under duress. <laughs> and so I tried to put as much into one slide, but we will be talking quite a bit about it. So if you look at. Sister, J Sister Dawn, can I ask you to pause a moment, please? Okay. A few of you said you're not hearing clearly. Um, like to ask if it's any better now. Could you say something, please, Sister Don? Yes, I can. I hope they can hear. Is that any better? That's better. It's better. Okay. 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 All right. Will you okay. please give me one moment to put your slides back up? Okay. Uh, 
All right, there we go. Please continue, okay. your first slide is up. Thank you. So we're on the second slide, if you would, and it will show kind of what is happening. All right, so we're just gonna deal with the estrogen and the progesterone, okay? So at the beginning of the, the, the um, Mendes process here, what's happening is that you have estrogen that takes the dominant role, and you see it go up there, estrogen. For the first one to 14 days, estrogen begins to build. Now, what we need to understand about estrogen is estrogen is a cell proliferator. It grows things, right? So you have the blood wall, and all these things are happening, right? And so estrogen is high. Things are being prepared. Then if you look after day 14, you will see that through to 28, there's another that takes over called progesterone, all right? So right after ovulation, progesterone is made. Why? Because when that egg comes out, uh, what's left, that little scar is what makes that wonderful progesterone. Now, progesterone is your happy hormone. Isn't that wonderful? You feel nice during those times, most of the time, you're normal. And uh, if you ever get pregnant, it goes up and up to about 300. It's, 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 it's almost off the chart, as it were. And it's a happy time, or it should be. Now, when that happens, then by the end, you see it go down by 28 days. Some people are 26 days. Some people are as short as 21. All right? But that's the average of what's happening in a woman. When she's beginning to stop this, okay, the progesterone levels drop and estrogen, estrogen drops, which is why fibroids tend to get smaller. Um, after menopause, but something awful has begun to happen to women in the industrial nation. There are reasons why, and by 32, according to Dr. Robert Lee, most women don't have progesterone, and their estrogen levels are high. Now, remember, I talked about the fact that estrogen is a cell proliferator. It helps to grow things. Right, you end up with you know many times if you're way too high, you get cancers and you know many different things because it grows, it grows cells, right? It grows things. Well, estrogen, if it's dominant in the body, and progesterone is not there to oppose it, you are going to have, or we are going to have, terrible things. Okay, so what's happening in the industrial world? Okay, if you look to the left, it says here that. And I, I just wrote this in, but cholesterol is your precursor to making pregnenolone, and pregnenolone makes progesterone. All right, so I'm just showing you your 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 base level is cholesterol that helps to make your your hormones, right? Your sex hormones. And progesterone, take close attention to this, is the one that helps to make the estrogen and the, the balance of the estrogen. Testosterone is the precursor to testosterone, brothers. All right, and your adrenals. Uh, the, 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 the adrenals help when when the ovaries stop making all that wonderful progesterone, the adrenals take over, but in a lesser degree, just what you would need to carry on for the rest of your life. Now, this is very important. Most people don't realize that estrogen dominance is happening to most people. Why is this? Did you know that plastic act like estrogen in the body? So for those of us who warm up our food in the microwave in a Tupperware, and we're, those, those plastics are leaching into the food, we're taking in plastic. If we're, in fact, um, according to Dr. Berg and quite a few others, uh, we're eating about a credit card of plastic every week. If you are sleeping in um bed clothes that are anti-wrinkle bed clothes, those things have all kinds of outgassing that they're doing into the system. Polyesters, these are plasticizers. They're all plastic. We're wearing plastic. The leg, those, those pants that we go to sweat in and do our, uh, you know, the, those yoga pants and some of these synthetic materials, they're made of plastic, right? And so we want to wear natural uh, things. And so these things are going into the body. The brassieres, the underwears that are closest to our bodies, these things are made of foams and plastics. These are all going in to the system. And you
how very serious this is because the softer the plastic, it has something called nanophenols in them to make the plastic soft and pliable. The softer the plastic, the more the estrogenic effect. Now, when you touch the plastic, it goes into the system as soon as it touches you. And as it goes in, it goes to the cells. It has a key. It acts just like a regular estrogen, but it's a pulse or the um, And it opens the cells and barges in. Now, your plasticizers are 400,000 times stronger than any plant estrogen. So you may stop eating soy, and hopefully you're not eating genetically modified soy, um, because that would be a problem, and I'll tell you why later if we even have time at this point. But when that goes in, you're going to have lots of side effects. It, it, it starts the endocrine system, right? So you've got that. Then there's another thing that has happened. On the food, they put something called glyphosate. <laughs> That's an issue, for food, which we may not have time to go into. I want to get to something else. When we're eating a lot of meat, and um, a dairy, what happens is the growth stimulants, and you'll say to me, Don, they no longer get growth stimulants. I think you'd better check the research. Those that are in the cows, in the fish, the fish they're finding with all kinds of trouble. Why? Because when, when we who are taking all these pills, all these HRT, we go to the bathroom, and we, it goes out into the sewage, all, the, all these hormones go out into the sewage, these bottom feeders, and these fish are taking those things in, and they're finding that the fish have both uh, male and female uh, capabilities. And there are some places where it's all female, and dead zones are happening in the in the um, waterways. The fish, uh, as a result of this, so this thing is serious, okay? And so we most of us are very estrogen dominant, and so we have not enough progesterone uh, to match. 32, according to um, Dr. Lee, a lot of women losing that at a very young age, okay? Um, statin drugs are another issue as well. All right, so what else? So synthetic clothes. So what would we do? We would wear um, wool, linen, uh, natural clothes, cotton, any of these types of clothing. All right. In your, in your household shampoos, your how you clean your, your dishes, all of these things have a lot of these endocrine disrupting pollutants. So it, you may be eating well, but then you have the things that you are breathing in from linonium and all these types of things. And if you're walking on linonium, just want to let you know, <laughs> your largest pores are under your feet, right? So if your socks are made of polyester, which most of them are, then you're, you're going to be taking those things if your, your slippers are made of these things. So once again, things to really think about. Uh, let me make sure. Now, I want to go into the birth pill, birth control uh, situation here. Now, every month that a woman takes birth control, there's less progesterone made and more estrogen rises. The more estrogen rises. So if, you're ta if you've been taking birth control pills, or you have a daughter or a sister or someone who's been taking that, you'll find they'll end up with, you know, a lot of these effects by the time they come into menopause. Every menopausal symptoms will happen as a result, right? Um, and it's because the progesterone level is steadily going down while the estrogen is rising, rising, and rising. And so I just want to show you the seriousness as to why we in industrial places like North America are suffering with these things when people in the Amazon and in Asian countries are not suffering from these diseases. All right, let's see. Let's see. Um, so I hope that's clear. All right, so then we want to talk about what are the solutions? What are the solutions? What can we do? Now, I want you to go to the third slide, and I don't know if you can read that at all. I'm able to make it larger. So if you just tell me the part that you'd like me to go to. Let's talk a little bit, because as we begin to get these hot flashes, the vaginal trouble, 
uncles and brothers, you didn't didn't realize this, but you're andropause when you you you, you know you're starting to feel depression. Uh, by the way, remember we talked about the fact that the progesterone is your happy hormone. Progesterone makes you feel happy without progesterone. Guess what the natural side effect is depression. But have you seen a massive uptake in depression? Yes. It's because progesterone is becoming more and more lacking. Now, so many times a woman will be put on um, HRT, hormone replacement therapy, and doctors know that if they're on for too long, cancers can come as a result and so on and so forth. But the women are so distraught, they think, well, not everyone's going to get it, so let me at least do what I can. Now, would you rather a heart attack or would you rather cancer? Thing to think about. Now, Dr. Lee, and anyone who wants the link to see his presentation, it's a very important presentation, you just let me know and I can get that link to you. But I wanted to put it on here, but it, um, I didn't uh, get that done. So uh, he talked about the fact that he did these very experiments in his own lab, his own research. He was able to do this, and he found that when the the um, HRT was given for the people he was doing, it caused something, or he found out it caused something called um, the system and the system in the system. And as he did his research, he began to find out this is most of the cause of the heart attack in women because it, because what happens is you cannot you cannot um, patient nature. Let me explain what I'm talking about. So we're talking about the role of progesterone, right? You go onto HRT for them to give you a drug when they make their progesterone or their estrogen, they cannot use what's in nature naturally if they're going to make money from it. So what has to happen? And let me let me say this: I'm no doctor. I'm a missionary, and these are all this is all information. Right? So these are things for you to consider. It's educational. Okay, I have to make sure I tell you. I'm not a... All right. So uh, when that causes the spasms, he felt he could not make it relent. And so that was very interesting to him. And he said, so these these things were a trouble. He went to find out where does this come from? Where, where can we get the natural progesterone, the bioidentical one, the one that the body is going to do? Well... There is a thing in the in the in the um, that the that the um, large uh, companies use. It's called Mexican wild yam. If anyone's ever heard of that, Mexican wild yam. Now, what they do is they take that Mexican wild yam, which has the precursor to um, um, progesterone, which is called diostrogen, I believe it is. And diostrogen, then what they do is they make the progesterone, but because they can't patent it, they have to add a few molecules. And then they can they can use it. The problem is it's not identical to yours, and so it causes some of the struggle in the body. So they find that many people who have gone on to these things go on to have much more profound disease, ones that can actually end up being in, in terminal cases. But there's hope. There is hope. What can we do? Is there a thing that we can have? Yes. Progesterone is available, and it's available in that Mexican wild yam. Now, let me let me just say what this thing can do. Um, by the way, a friend of mine who was in, is menopausal, but had terrible um, rashes and all of those things, she went to Tonga and ate their yams in Tonga. And for the entire month that she was there, she had not one hot breath in a place, right? And it's because the estrogen is surging through, right, that you get these hot uh, flashes. It's heat, the word estrogen from heat or fertility, where it comes from. Right? Anyway, what can we do about this? So let's just look at the role of progesterone. So in women, it operates harmonious, harmoniously with estrogen. So it, 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 it's like a partner to it. And when estrogen doesn't have its partner, it's a problem. So it helps you to feel good. Listen to this. It builds new bone tissue. Can you see that there? 
If you have a, if you have a, a baby, if you get pregnant, it helps you to keep the egg. It helps, it helps you to keep the pregnancy, right? I had a young lady call me. She couldn't have a little one. They said, we, I said, I don't know. I think I think I've seen you. Your hair is shiny. I think you could probably do it. She ended up taking that. She has two today. Another young lady called me from Canada. I didn't see her. She told her a few things. She changed her diet, added a, a few things. And the next two years, she I was sent a picture. I never heard anything from her again, but I was sent a picture of her with a one and a half year old child on her hip. It's not good. God, it's good. And this is a tuber. It's a, like a potato. Now, let's see. Um, so, so it helps to um, make the reproductive areas young again. So the thin tissue, it, it hydrates and be, be done, get like how you were when you were younger, right? So it would make um, your coming together with your husband a much more wonderful thing. So brothers, if you hear that, amen. If you have a sister that you would like to have that happen to, it, this was good that you were here today. All right. So um, it balances the blood. It helps to balance the blood sugar. Are you seeing this? Wow. Acts as a natural diuretic. Normalizes blood clotting, promotes normal patterns of sleep. Isn't that sweet? Create helps to create new bones. Helps with the action of the thyroid hormone. Reduces anxiety and depression, and increases the libido. All right, very, very, very interesting. So these are things that are so important. Now, uh, let's see. Let me just show men really quickly. Can we go to the the fourth um, slide here? Why can't I read that? Okay, okay here we go. Some of my male patients, this is um, talking about a man named Raymond Wilson here. Some of my male patients are also experiencing estrogen dominance and imbalances. But for them, you could be drinking out of water, plastic water bottles. That's another way to get plasticizers in you. By the way, tap water has 4,000 um, of these. Nanoparticles of plastic, water bottles, especially if they've been in the heat, 90,000. Just want to let you know go to glass water bottles, um, go to metal, let's say it's stainless steel, clay, any of these other natural uh, containers would be a better bet than some of the, the pl um, plastic water bottles, especially when they're really flimsy. And if you look at the babies now, their diapers are made of what? Plastic, right? Um, and so you're you're watching this soup. So anyway, um, thus this results in a whole other set of symptoms for a man. Uh, so you got erectile dysfunction here, um, depression, gaining belly fat, increased male breast tissue. Worse, uh, recent research has suggested that too much estrogen in a man's system puts him at higher risk for developing what? Cancer. So, man, this is for you. And guess what? Progesterone is for you as well. You just use it differently because you don't have to know explain how to be. And boy, this time is moving. All right. I'm not going to talk too much more about uh, why we don't have the progesterone. But know that static juice is um, set. Okay. Let's get it together here. Going so fast. <laughs> yes. Um, so, uh, yes, okay, so where were we? So we want to talk about the solutions now. What can we do when these levels are low? And as we're going into perimenopausal issues, how can we relieve this? One, get rid of the plastic. They have to. When those plastics go into the system, I told you what happens. It is a problem. Now, how can we get rid of all this estrogen? Is there a simple thing? Oh, and I have to go back and tell you one more thing that this is not the thing. It makes um, you become high in cortisol. Now, cortisol breaks down muscle, tissue, and bone, which is why older women begin to get bone loss. It increases the sugar uh, in the bloodstream and the fat. So it makes fat. So if you don't have enough um, of the progesterone and this starts happening, you're going to see that belly fat come in. And you're wondering why you're exercising, how <laughs> nothing's happening, what's going on with me. We're going to talk about how you can bring that down. Okay, several things you can do. One, iodine from, from sea kelp addresses estrogen dominance. 
Isn't that wonderful? Another food. So uh, if you can, there's a wonderful estrogen actually. Yeah, this one is, well, I don't know if you have it over here, but anyway, it's iodine supplement coming from the, with the cow. Now, one of the ways you can tell if you don't have enough iodine, one, of course, go get a blood lab, complete blood lab, and see what, what's going on with your trace minerals and things of that nature. But sometimes if you take iodine, the kind that's colored, because you do, they have a colorless one, and you would say, put it on your, just on your thigh somewhere. And if you come back at an hour or so later and it's completely gone, your body sucks that thing up. You're normally, as a result, you could be deficient, but of course, finding out is the best way to go. So that helps to bring down um, uh, estrogen quickly, actually. There's another um, thing that helps is vitamin E. Right now, let me talk about what's going on with vitamin E, vitamin C. A lot of people will take vitamin C, vitamin E, and they're not taking, they're taking synthetic vitamins like the ascorbic acid, and it will do some of the work, but they're finding that the synthetic things are not as good. And by the way, ascorbic acid is only the ring around. Take this to heart. In the Bible, Bible says, the Bible says God created heavens and the earth, right? Everything in nature comes in complexes. When we take and extract food out, so in, we take the curcumin out of the turmeric, and we don't allow the other cofactors to work with it, we can have issues. Okay? The same thing happens when we do this with our vitamins. We take those one a day, and it's, it's extracted food. Well, well, vitamin E is the same way. Vitamin E comes in a complex. You want all the tocopherols. You want everything together. So. You want to get a proper vitamin E in your life, okay? Um, iodine, once again, um, maca is a blessing. Um, that's M-A-C-A. And um, these are things that help to balance the hormones. M-A-C-A. And um, let's see here. All right. So you want to also, um, there's a few more things, but I'm going to go on to the liver. Now, the liver, a healthy liver is extremely important. Why? Because the liver, as a general rule, it does a lot of work. But one of the things, two of the things it does, is that it will actually reduce excessive amounts of hormones, such as estrogen and cortisol. Isn't that wonderful? But it has to be working well. If it's not working well because of the fatty diet, because of high fructose corn syrup, let me just tell you a little bit about high fructose corn syrup, which is in so many things. Did you know? That it is metabolized or used in the body the same way as ethanol or beer or alcohol is. And it will cross link the, the, the tissues of the liver like you had barbecued. It turns it from like you would have, it could, you, it's almost like it's cirrhosis of the liver, but done by those cancer. This is very serious. So I'm giving you some very serious information here, but. I want to be your friend, amen? God says, I want you to put good things in your mouth. Then I can renew your youth as the eagles, but the bad things are doing trouble, giving us trouble. So you want to heal that liver. Milk thistle is always a blessing. Once again, this is general information, so you want to be careful that you're not contraindicated in any way or, or that you shouldn't use it because you're taking a particular drug. Okay, All right. So that is, um, so you need a healthy liver. There's wonderful ways to help your liver become healthy. Now, let me tell you another very simple way to help with this. And it's your friend, the cabbage. I hope you all love cabbage. If cabbage loves you, unless you're allergic, or any of the cruciferous vegetables. Wow. The cruciferous vegetables make something called DIM for indoles. These indoles do a mighty work. I said, 25 years ago, researchers at Johns Hopkins uh, discovered that four-day-old broccoli sprouts 20 to 50 times as many cancer-preventing components than full-grown broccoli has. But trust me, full-grown broccoli does work. These components uh, eventually came to be became known as DIM, and that's all big long words. All right, and so it's anti-inflammatory. So Brussels sprouts, kale. Broccoli, cauliflower, savoy cabbage, 
cabbage, bok choy, all of these are the same vegetables, basically. They were just bred differently, one for the flower, so on and so forth. These are a mighty blessing. Um, there's something called calcium deglucerate. I'm not a huge fan of too many supplements, but um, it decreases oxygen and ammonia. How do you get ammonia? By eating way too much protein. A lot of Americans tend to eat a lot of protein. And so it reduces even the re um, the estrogen receptors. So it, it, it's an interesting thing. Another thing these, these things do is increases the liver circulation. So wonderful ways to help your liver. Right? Um, so these are things that are going to be a mighty, mighty blessing. Let's go to the last, the last one here. Um, there's so much to talk about, but I know our time is coming to a close here. Um, so. If you look at the solutions here, Anna's Wild Yam, what is that? Anna's Wild Yam Cream is a cream, um, just like Dr. Robert Lee, he has a cream called Progesterol. If you want to look that one up. Anna's Wild Yam Cream is actually a cream that's actually, it's, it's taken from the, the yam, and you just put it on your the, the different parts of the body, and the body will take it in, like on the breast tissue or on the chest. Uh, the top of the chest by the um, inner portion of the um, arm, the inner portion of the thigh, on the, on the belly, anywhere there's little fat areas or tender pieces, uh, tender skin, what happens is the, over time the body will take it in through the skin and beautiful things happen. Some people choose to take it by mouth, but it doesn't work the same way. I just want to let you know this by mouth. We don't have time to get into some of that. So, uh, natural progesterone is very important. If you're going to do it, it needs to be bioidentical. With Anaswag Yam, it has the precursor that actually stimulates your own body to make the progesterone you're supposed to have. That way you don't have to take this for the rest of your life, like you would have to take HRT. One woman took it for about a year. She felt fine. She didn't have, you know, all the side effects that were happening to her. She took it for a year and then got some six months. She took it for six months more, got off of it, had no more trouble. Depending on how severe you are, you may have to take it a little longer. Some people less. It's just how how um, much how much estrogen dominance you might have going on. All right. So natural progesterone, natural clothing, very important. What uh, Modal is supposed to be natural. Viscose is supposed to be from tree pulp. Uh, but if you can stick with what we had about 150 years ago. It's getting harder and harder to find. Okay, so the reduction of plastics, don't don't heat up your things in plastics and store your things. And even when you're buying in containers, know that in your tin cans, those are filled with bisphenol A, which also is a process measure. So these things are going into your body as you eat from them. Try to grow food, try to go to your farmer's market, try to enjoy as much as you can from the produce section and not in a container. I've often said that if we eat from bottles and uh, I've heard a man say, should say, bottles, cans, and packages, we end up looking like bottles, cans, and packages. We want to be careful not to allow those things to derange our bodies. Iodine, one way to quickly bring down some of these things and some of the healing herbs, and we can talk about that another time, and cabbage, or cruciferous, lots of fruits and vegetables, and um, try to back off of meat. If you're a huge meat eater, it's not your friend. Uh, the tissues of the meat hold all of these growth hormones, and these are the problems for both men and women. That today you can hear that God wants to put the good things in your mouth, and he will restore the, the years. He says, I will redeem your life from destruction. Even if you've had years of, of the pill or different things, you can turn this around, and you can have healing. One last thing, Dr. Lee, in that spoke uh, that he had a hundred percent. Now this is stunning: a hundred percent reversal of the of the osteoporosis when he gave them the natural his bioidentical natural progesterone uh, with the women. Listen to this: endometriosis, PCOS, uh, um, uterine cancer. Wow, ovarian cancers. Yeah. news. There is hope for us in Christ. Simple things like the natural yams that we don't eat anymore. Islanders know a little bit about this. And 
stop putting the fuel on the fire. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much. And I know today was quite a day uh, in trying to get some of this information, and we didn't necessarily get all of it, but we thank you for maybe someone out there needed to hear and hopefully can benefit from researching, going on and searching even more the things they can do to get peace in the body, a lack of dis ease. And so we can have the, the, the peace of Christ. We said, take my yoke upon you. For my yoke is easy, not this easy. It is easy and it is light. So Father, we just ask that you would give us that. You would touch us with your healing power and you would show us and give us strength to change our life in different ways. Use the eight laws of health to help us overcome. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Um, Sister Dawn, for these facts of the word and facts of nature that you've shared with us. We have some individuals with raised hands, so I'm going to um, allow them to speak and ask their question. Amazing Grace, please go ahead and unmute and ask your question. We can't hear you, Amazing Grace. Still can't hear you. Can you type it into the hello? chat, please? Yes. Hello. Okay. Can you hear me now? Can hear you now. Okay. Great. Um, she mentioned one of the solution. Two of the solution is natural progesterone cream and Anna's Wildium cream. So. Um, I was going to ask about the no brand of progesterone cream, if that's something uh, you would recommend as well, if you're not able to get maybe the Anna's Wildium cream. Wildium. Well, yeah. mm -hmm. So you called it no? Is the, how is that spelled? Yeah, no. N-O-W. It's, no. it's the brand. Right. No is the brand, but it's a progesterone. So I would um, believe now brand normally would have it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a definitely a more affordable brand. Um, I haven't checked into it to see what, what people have given feedback on it, but they normally, uh, if it's bioidentical, it should be helpful. That is why GAM has the preeminence in that it's not so much the actual thing, it actually stimulates your own body. It has a precursor to do it so that you wouldn't have to take it forever, so that the body doesn't get lazy, just so you know the difference. So, okay. Um, do you suggest the wild yam cream is used for what was that how long would you suggest the wild yam cream to be used for okay so because i am not um, a doctor i cannot recommend or suggest but what i would do what i would consider um, doing is that i would um because i try to stay away from these plastics depending on how um, severe your your hot flashes or your whatever might be happening, you can know you might be very severe. I would at least try three to six months, and then okay. back off of it if you're still having the the, the issues, and then mm -hmm. if not, then go back onto it. And I think a jar or normal jar normally lasts what two months. Yes, 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 um, it does. So yeah, so if you had two, two or two or three of those jars and you use them up and and you do it morning and evening, keep it for your bedside. So in the morning when you wake up and then it's just for you, just so you remember it. 
And mm-hmm. you should know how to take it. Everyone's different. If you're still having your period, there's a way to take it. If you're a young person, there's a way to take it. Uh, with the Anaswal, again, once again, it's, it's uh, stimulating your own body. The others, they'll tell you exactly how to take it, depending on which, if you're menopausal, you take it um, three weeks of the, of the month so and skip a week. So, yes, yeah, so I would do at least six months, see how you feel, and then a year, six months to a year is normally is normally what it takes. Okay. So it takes a while to balance your, your body, depending on how much, um, if you've had birth control, and I'm not just asking you in general, birth control, if you've taken in those plastics, you know, if you wear a lot of synthetic clothes and underwear, you may be, you may have to take it for a year, year and a half. It really depends. It's very okay. difficult to unless I talk with you. When I deal with people, I normally have them some sort of eight pager, so I can have some mm-hmm. information and, and not just be, you know, in the so okay. that that would be hopefully the answers. Mm-hmm. Would you share your information maybe in the chat or or something? Sure, they can they can email me. Anyone can email me mm-hmm. and call. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Thank I you. Have a chat. I, I'm not on there. I'm technically challenged, but if you'd like, you could put if you remember my email, uh, you could put that on there if you'd like. Okay, we'll do. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, Sister Jenny, you had your hand up earlier and I you lowered it. Do you not have a question anymore? I lowered it because, good afternoon. I lowered it because I did heard her answer the question about the wild yam because I normally use the wild yam because I was recommended it and it does work, but I just wanted to know how long can I use it for because I think that I'm using it for a year plus. It's um the the blessing. Now I don't. Is this the, is this the same now brand that you're using? Or no, 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 no. I got the Anna while I'm from um Australia. Okay, yes. Very good. Okay, so, so yes, I about a year normally year plus. You should be pretty good to go. Stop. I would back off a little bit and then see if you have any side effects. Now there's some things you can do. Remember the iodine gets rid of estrogen dominance as well. Yeah. You've got vitamin E. I yeah. Maca root will do it. So once you get off the but and as well, get them, it's not the cheapest because it's coming from I don't know. I Australia. Australia. Yes. It's not the cheapest. It's fifty fifty eight dollars. You know, it's a, quite an expensive go. But it's in glass, so it's not giving you more of the plastics. And what's beautiful about it, it's the precursor. So your body should start stimulating itself. If you're menopausal, the 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 adrenals will start taking over and this will help support those adrenals and adrenals should give you the right amount for what you need where you are. if you're not menopausal then you should be okay after about a year year and a half depending on how much um, toxicity if you're still breathing in taking in plastics in your clothing you're, you're still going to have you. some issues so just remember that you got to change those lifestyle habits that got it there meat a lot of meat eating you know don't forget those things because right? you're putting the fuel on the fire so if you stop the fuel on the fire, then you heal. You keep the fuel on the fire. You're just met. You're just you know. You're just balancing. But you just have to remember what you're doing. It's just uh, just one it's a few things to do. Hopefully that helps. I agree because I only use it once per day, and then they have the period the direction where you stop for the for eight days of not using it, mm-hmm. and I think it is very effective. So. I have stopped now for a month and I don't have any symptoms of menopausal or anything. And I think that even if you cut your sugar out, I think it helps a bit too. Oh boy, it's beautiful. We couldn't get into all of it, but oh yes. I, I would say to, for a whole month, get off of those sugars and see what happens yes. just with doing that. And another thing, I want to tell you something. When I gave a lecture not too long ago on another Zoom line, a lady came in. And she and her daughter had terrible menstrual cycle problems. Do you know they got rid of their plastic um, uh, pads, got rid of them, and in what, the next month they had no pain. Okay. The next month. So you 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 imagine all the sensitive areas. The body is taking those things up. There there's a there's a there's a pad called L. L, it's just called L, and it's made with organic cotton that's on the top. And you can wear that one, and it's not going to give you all those plastics up against your body. Can you imagine this? I wish I'd known this a lot earlier. Um, but these are the things that these plastics are doing.
going and you know we're having these terrible what is the, what is the um what is the brand you said how the how do you spell l just let l l yeah you can get them at target well i don't know how much i want to talk about on sabbath but you can get them at some of these various places um and you okay. and it's a good amount of them and they work they work well and they are it's called l there's also a seventh generation one that has wood pulp them they don't feel as good <laughs> i can just tell you that myself but the l ones are are i, I like the l okay. it, it has l and it has a circle around it, and it's blue and white uh, uh, package. Uh, it's called L. And it's okay. It actually helps the people who are in um, the impoverished nations, and they are making their trade. They're able to make trades as a result. It's fair trade. So it's okay. really a nice way to help the sisters that, um, like in India and Africa and some of these places where it's very difficult for them to make a living because it's a patriarchal society. So um, it's it's a wonderful thing to buy, and it's a wonderful thing for your body. L. Okay, good. thank you so it. much. I, I said Target is a, a place to sell it. Okay. Thank you so much. So, okay. Sister Dawn, we're coming up at the hour at ten o'clock. Um, okay. There are a few more questions. What would you like to do? Would you, do? Are you able to take a few more questions, or do you need to pause? Okay. Sister Charlene, please go ahead and unmute yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you for the information. Um, you're hard to hear uh, at times you broke up. So I just had a couple of questions. The first one, when you keep referring to Dr. Lee, is that Dr. John Lee? I think it's John Lee. It's either Rob, Robert John. I think it's John Lee. Uh -huh. Okay. And he has a website with products that are similar to Anna's. Are they similar in effect? Do you know? I think they are similar. He was the one who did this research and got the 100% regression. So I think he knows what he's talking about. With Anna's wild yam, remember what we have, what we have as the people is that we have a little extra insight as to the, the things of nature um, and what they can do in their whole food forms, right? So I think Anna's wild yam does have, like I said, it has the precursor to it, which stimulates the body to do it, not just the entire thing already done for you, but that the body doesn't become lazy. That's the difference. So with Anna's, it's going to st help you stimulate your body. With this one, I haven't seen the feedback, but in his own experiments, there were a hundred, it, it turned all of those things he worked with, all of the people he worked with, it reversed. Okay. Osteoporosis, um, Wonderful, thank you. And you mentioned iodine. Um, I was wondering if, if you could say what kind of iodine it was again slowly because you kind of are breaking up and what was the test that you were saying you put it on your skin and what happens could you repeat that sure 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 so iodine um, I didn't hear your first question very well um, but I'll, I, can't, I heard the second one iodine uh, helps to get rid of estrogen dominance quickly iodine uh, with kelp with kelp uh, with Sea kelp, very good at bringing down estrogen dominance. So if you're, if you're really suffering and you want to get a quick, um, uh, this is Dr. Berg's research, you can bring that down um, uh, quickly with that. So what you would do if you want to find out if you are iodine um, deficient, or like I said, the first thing, go to your health professional and find out a good blood panel will help you. But but if you don't have all those funds or you don't have these different things, you can take iodine, uh, uh, you know, a proper good uh, dye that iodine, maybe something like, um, I think of who has the good one. Maybe now even has one, I'm not sure. But you would take that in, put that, it's normally colored quite yellow, you put the, or dark, you can put that on your thigh or on your, you know, the top of your knee or something like that. And come back about an hour or so later and see um, if it's still there. If it's sucked in that quickly, your body is crying for it. <laughs> you would want to consider taking that um, uh, maybe in the diet a little more um, and making sure that you have enough iodine. Now, remember, though, trace minerals, and iodine is one, you, you want to take them in trace amounts. If, though, you, are un, you don't have very much, you might want to take a, a small loading of it. 
So right. yes, yeah, you, you would check by putting the iodine on your thigh or knee or somewhere on your body and watch how quickly it goes away. And if it's gone pretty quickly, uh, you can know the body is, is longing for that. Okay. So would that go to reason that if you um, put it on and it starts to not go away, then that would mean that your iodine levels have balanced out? I think they're normally, according to him, it, it was, yeah, that, that's, if you have a good amount and you're not, it's not um, like begging for it so quickly, it'll probably still go away, but not as quickly because the body's going to use things that are just like the plastic. You touch it, it does go in. Only plastics are aggressive. Right. Natural things are not aggressive. Okay. Wonderful. All right. Thank um, you very much. Sure. What was, there was one other question. I couldn't hear it. Oh gosh. Um, I I think it was about the iodine. I think it was about the iodine, but I think you've answered um, everything about the iodine. When you say it with kelp, does it come together in kelp, or is there like a natural seaweed that you can eat that would contain this? That oh, yeah. you would. So, so kelp is the seaweed you can eat. Um, <clears throat> so um, uh, um, there's Klamath Falls blue green algae. There's um, kelp granules, these are things that you would want to put in the diet if you can from a, a decent source. Um, okay. Um, hopefully not one by Fukushima. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, but, but uh, yeah, so nori, um, those nori sheets, um, there's a place called... Um, oh, nori yeah. Called, um, so I basically all seaweed. Sheets. Okay, it's wonderful. Really, I don't know how much you really say, but that, that raw nori doesn't um, these are places you can go and get um, these ones that are not filled with the heavy metals and some of these other places. Um, if you're wanting to know really good, um, this, um, you can, you know, you can connect with me later and I can send you to those links. Wonderful. Just, just take my email and say, I would like to know where to find such and such, you know, and I can send that to you and give me a moment when I should have internet this evening. As I'm traveling, I don't always know if I have internet and my computer. I'll try to do it before this computer goes away from me. All right. Thank you very much for your for your time. Thank you. Sister Akachi, please go ahead and ask your question. Okay, I had um two quick questions. I don't know how quick they are, but the first one was. How does the wild yam root affect someone who has fibroids? And then the next question was, if, well, can you pause and ask the first one and then we come back and do the second one? Sure. Should, can you hear me? Should I repeat the question? You want me to repeat the question? How does the yam, the wild yam affect those who have fibroids? Yes, that was, yes. Question. So remember, we said that estrogen is a cell proliferator. It grows things. It grows tumors. It grows things. That's why endometriosis, you have all this growth going around. Same thing with fibroids. Fibroids are growth. So if you're estrogen dominant, normally fibroids go away when you get to menopause because the estrogen levels go down. So if uh, you have unopposed estrogen, these are the things that happen. That's one of the reasons. It's normally a result of estrogen dominance. So when you begin to bring from the you get the progesterone levels back up and the progesterone and the estrogen levels in right down, guess what happens to fibroids? Guess what happens after menopause? It goes down. So you want to eat the foods that would be a blessing. We didn't get into some of those things, but the foods, we got into some like cabbage. So a green diet is a fantastic diet. But you've got to be careful if you're putting on plastic clothes, if you're wearing plastic clothes, if you're drinking plastic clothes, all these different things. Um, in and um, these are things that you want to be careful of. If you have to wear a coat that's sticky, make sure you have something in between your lips, right? Um, these are the things that you want to do with yes, it's wonderful to help bring those down and to help heal you of the extra growth that are happening. I hope that answers it. And what is your second question? Yeah, my second question, I think this may have already been answered previously, but 
I just wanted to clarify for someone who, for example, if you have, if you have an IUD and okay. um, would you uh -huh. just stop taking and start the S the uh, wild EM route? Like, is there a specific? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry, let me let you finish. I kept thinking you were finished before I had. Oh, no, I don't have anything else. That was it. Okay. So, yeah. So when you have. Can I ask you to pause I... a moment, Sister Dawn, before you answer that? And um, one moment. Okay, um, now you're back on. Okay. Can you hear her, everyone? Um, Sister Hello. Dawn, can you say something? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you better. I know you answered my first question, but I honestly couldn't hear anything you were saying. Um, yeah, but I can I'm hear you better now. <laughs> sure, I can do that. Um, so with the first question, Yes, the fibroids, what happens with, with estrogen dominance is that it grows things, right? So mm -hmm. that means when we're taking it or have a lot of estrogen, things grow. So fibroids can grow as a result of having so much estrogen. Well, when the wild yam or mock up, whatever you choose to take in, it helps to balance the progesterone and bring down the estrogen. The iodine helps to bring down those estrogens. Guess what happens? They begin to shrink, just like when you get to menopause, those who have fibroids tend to have their fibroids shrink to menopause because the estrogen level goes down, right? Okay, okay. So what happens is, as you begin, while you're in your prime of life, you want to be able to enjoy that and have them go down you. So you don't have to wait for all of that because the longer you have them, the more likely they can turn into something you don't want. Right, it's four times more likely to turn into um, a, a, a malignant growth, and you don't want that, right? So, you want to be able to bring that down. And I believe I can't make um, claims, but I believe a lot of women have been blessed by bringing the, that down. Um, but once again, don't keep adding fuel to the fire like a lot of sticks and eating sandwiches um, and things of that nature. If it's crinkly and all that, let it go. Eat, go and buy your produce from somewhere else and, and cook it because you need to have get those things to cook it. Very, very, very important. Okay. Did you hear me okay for that? Okay, I know at the end you said you should cook it. Were you saying to cook the wild yam to eat the no, I was I was saying to take the plastic from you know, like eating and you know from packages and then what you can do is is cook your food your soup is what i'm saying so yes understood okay food is. understood okay thank you yeah. and then that second question was if someone has an iud currently has an iud and they want to begin using wild yam is it is there like a time period that has to be between um those two Thing, or is it you can just have the IUD taken out and start using wild rare? I, I don't know. What as far as I, yes, that's a good question. So as far as I understand it, um, once that comes out, folks, I didn't make them do it, but they decided they wanted to come off of it. And what you're going to do, the, remember the wild yam is a food. It's a food. So it'll be like you're eating food, right? But you're just taking it in through your skin. So as far as I understand it, they don't know if anyone who's any terrible experience with that. And once again, it's a food. So we're dealing with not a HRT, which is a which is a synthetic substance that can give you some real rough experience. This is food. And so if it's an Amazon again, once again, it's stimulating um, your own body to do it, which is actually what, what really needs to happen if you're going to get your progesterone back your levels back so that you don't get depression and try some drying up skin, thinning skin, and all those different uh, things. So um, to me, if it were me, it would be the sooner the better. 
I don't know of any sorry, issues with them. I would say, of course, make sure when you get it, how you get it. You know, a good doctor, good healthcare professional, talk with them about the things, about the things that you're doing if you so choose. And uh, please make sure it's, you know, I don't know the whole story with you. And normally I think I said it helps people fill out an eight pager just so they can understand um, where they're coming from and their background and, you know, the medical portions of the documents we don't hurt you. But the story is not anything to cancer. Okay. Thank you. You're All welcome. Right. And so thank you so much. Amazing Grace, this will be our last question and we'll close out with a word of prayer. Yes, thank you so much again. Just a quick question. I know she was talking about the iodine, but I don't know, uh, my phone seemed to be in and out, so I didn't hear clearly. I want to know um, that the type of iodine, is it the one that you can just go order in the, in the pharmacy? They use it for dressing as well? Um, question. What kind uh, of no, iodine so you do you recommend? The iodine food grade that, um, like the one I have here, it's made from, um, it's potassium iodide, this one. Potassium anyway, iodine? Um, what was that? Yes. Did you say potassium. potassium iodine? This one is potassium iodine here, but you want the one with sea kelp. If you can oh, get so it the iodine, the food grade kelp. iodine with sea kelp. Sea kelp, right. That's nicer. I prefer food. I prefer when you get it from food, like nori or, and, but they have it in form where you, it's liquid and you could just, you know, put it in, in your tongue just before you eat whatever and you put it in or even with any food. I like it with food because normally you get trace minerals from eating. Yes, so, yes, yes. So you put a little bit in and I prefer to have it go in with the rest of the food. But if you can get one with the sea kelp, that's really great. Some people choose oh. to do the HEA as well. That's another thing we didn't necessarily get into. Um, but once again, synthetic things are just not the best. You want to get a real deal. Kelp, iodine, great way to go. Um, vitamin code. Um, vitamin code has some good ones. Wise, a W I S E vitamins. They have some good ones that are actually made from fruits and vegetables, raw and ground down, like their food. I prefer those types of, um, um, of vitamins. If you're going to take vitamins, I prefer that kind where it's raw, it's food, and it, the body understands it. So, mm -hmm. so vitamin code or wise, these are places you can go. For the iodine, um, the food grade iodine that you said, right? You should be able to find iodine um, from Martin and Blythe, from Wise. Um, I'm trying to think of another big brand. Solar Ray may have it. Um, but if you email me, I can send okay. you some of the best. Sure, I could, I could, I could. Just remind me what, what, what we talked about. I want this, 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 and this. And then. Okay. Then. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I'd be praised. Thank you so much, um, Sister Dawn, and everyone for your questions and comments. And so we'll let us close out with a word of prayer. And, um, hope to bring sister dawn back again we had some we had tef technical difficulties today okay. so um some of you made comments about the not being able to hear clearly so oh. um this was recorded so we'll be able to go back her email address is in the chat and um yes we'll just follow up with you so that everyone can get um the information that they needed um, thank you again, and let us have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for understanding. And as we pray today, this Sabbath day, this time of rest in you, and pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, Amen. you tell us that we need understanding and that you tell us that your ways are simple. And so we thank you for the explanations that have been given today and to see how um, doing things of convenience or of the world can complicate this body temple that you have um, created for us. So Lord, let us be um, 
wise and apply the lessons that we've learned today and um, just share with others because this Amen. is this is the right arm of the gospel. And when our body is well, our mind is also well. And that's how we're able to um, just reason and hear you speaking to us. Uh, Heavenly Father, please be with um, our speaker today as she travels and continues to share with others and teach and preach. And um, until we meet again next Sabbath, this is our prayer. Um, thy will be done. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye, everyone. Take care and God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Sabbath. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath.